What is up everybody? That car guy Eddie here. Thank you very much for tuning in to another video. Uh, today's video is uh, about the Civic. Yay! Everybody loves the Civic videos. And it's to answer a frequently asked question regarding blow-off valves. So this is something that comes up daily almost. It comes up on the forums. It comes up on, uh, you know, your Facebook uh, chats and your Facebook uh, pages and stuff regarding can I put a blow off valve on my 10th gen Civic Si. So once again, for all of you though, that are out there, your 10th gen Civic Si is your 2016 till now Civic. Uh, and it's the one with the turbos. Sorry, you know, if you have the K20 um, and you're naturally aspirated, the video is not really for you. But if you want to get a good idea on how blow off valves actually work, you can keep watching the video because there will be some good information in here for in the future if you ever do in fact get a turbocharged car. So first of all, let me explain to you how a turbocharger works. So a turbocharger uses exa uh, exhaust gas pulses to spin a turbine, okay? So it uses the exhaust to spin a turbine, much like a wagon wheel or like a, a wheel on like a, uh, what are those things? Um, like a river wheel, okay? Basically think of like, oh, a pinwheel. Do you know what a pinwheel is? You grab it and it blows, okay? That's what your exhaust is doing and it spins on the turbine side. And what that does is it's connected to a shaft on a different side. And when this one spins, this one spins and it actually creates compressed air and it, that compressed air is forced into the motor. So um, once again, that's how a turbocharger works just on like a basic, I mean, super basic thing. Pinwheel uses exhaust uh, gas to spin a turbine the turbine attaches to another wheel and it and, and it compresses air and it forces it into your engine okay that's <laughs> basic turbocharger 101 now what does a blow-off valve do well ideally and back in the olden days when you had <laughs> olden days like the early 2000s um, back before uh, wastegates were electronically controlled sometimes um, um, okay, so your car is always kicking exhaust out of the tailpipe, right? If you walk around the back side of your car and you put your hand back there, you're going to feel exhaust coming out of the tailpipe. Well, if a turbocharger, if you have a turbine and the exhaust is spinning past it and it's compressing air all the time, that air has to have somewhere to go. Well, if you're on the gas and your throttle body is open and air is coming in and you're able to take that compressed air and shove it into the throttle body of the car, everything is fine. That's how a turbocharger works. But what happens when you're going really hard on your car, you're going fast, and the faster you go, the more boost you have because the more, the faster you go, the more exhaust spins past that turbine and the turbine compresses more air, which in terms means raises your boost and you go faster. That's why with a turbocharged car, you might hear a little bit of something that they call lag. And what lag is, is it's basically, it's that first initial step. It's, it's, it's trying to get that big rock moving, you know, trying to get that turbine, which is a little bit of exhaust. But once you get in the boost, okay, and th that's what you hear you hear people talk about oh th this is how you get into boost or man when it hits boost and the reason why is because it it takes a second for that compressed air to build up enough charge and that's called psi to actually do something to your motor so <laughs> there you go that's 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 a quick three minute video on how turbochargers work but this is actually a video regarding blow-off valves so what's a blow-off valve well if you're really going hard on your car right and you got all this compressed air and you let off the throttle because you need to shift, that throttle plate snaps closed and you have all this compressed air, where does it go? Uh, and you can have severe problems if that doesn't go anywhere. So you have something called a waste gate or a blow off valve. And it's exactly what it sounds like. You're using wasted air that you don't need. And what it is basically, it's a diaphragm and the diaphragm opens up when it hits a certain boost pressure and it vents it. Um, it doesn't shove it into your motor, it vents it. Now, this is where a blow valve comes in and the different types of blow valves and how motors are used. Now, in the past, many cars that you hear that are turbocharged or if you played any of the Need for Speed games, the moment you put a turbo on your car, when you're driving, every time you shift, you're like, wah, soof, wah, soof, wah, soof. And that noise is the compressed air being shoved out of the wastegate. That's what you're hearing. 
Um, if a, a lot of cars, and that's why the sound is different. Some cars make a high pitch noise. That's because they're forcing the air out of a smaller diaphragm, like an HKS, super sequential, actually has different cones because when you force the air by it, you're literally making noise. It's like a reed on an instrument. Um, and it can go high pitch, like a super sequential may go Soo! like that. Uh, and um, like a, a blow off valve spacer, well, because it's just using your stock wastegate, it may go So every time, like, then that's why all different cars sound differently when you put blow off valves on them. Uh, but there's different types of blow off valves. So back in the early 2000s and pre, pre smog, I guess you can say, uh, I, not even pre smog, pre computer controlled, most blow off valves vented to the atmosphere. Uh, and that's how most turbochargers work. Okay. They vent to the atmosphere. You're using compressed air and you're venting it. However, smog it goes, no, 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 no. Like the government comes in and goes, what if that air has, has, you know, gasoline in it or oil in it from the turbocharger or something and you're venting it to the air how dare you pollute them um and that's a big thing you know that, that that's a big thing uh so what ends up happening is is that companies make what's called a recirculating blow off valve so what a recirculating blow off valve does is it works on the exact same principle your a throttle body snaps shut the compressed air needs somewhere to go, the wastegate or blow off valve opens. And when it does that, it's vented. There's actually a pipe that vents it to your intake pipe. Okay. So what ends up happening is, is that when you let off the gas really quick, the compressed air goes through this little pipe into your intake. Now, why is this important? And why do you even care where it goes? Well, one on a 10th gen Civic, the computer, the stock ECU, PCM, whatever you want to call it, depends on that extra air. The car was engineered to the fact that whenever you let off the gas, there is going to be a little bit of extra air that is shoved into the intake, uh, into the intake pipe past the mass airflow. And because of that, um, the car runs a little richer because anytime you have more air, you need more fuel or the car's going to run at some weird lean condition, which you don't want. You cars run rich, richer is safer, leaner is faster. That's a whole different video altogether. But this is about recirculating blow off valves. Okay. So let's recoup. So recirculating blow off valve. Once again, your throttle body snaps shut. You have all this compressed air. The compressed air is forced through a pipe into your intake tube. Okay. Um, why is this important? Because you want the car to run normal and the ECU expects the air to be there. Now, what happens if you take that air, you take that tube, you put a blow off valve on it and you vent it to the atmosphere, okay? Which means you just, you don't put it back into the motor anywhere, you just vent it to the atmosphere. Well, in this particular situation, the car theoretically could possibly run lean. And the reason that the car can run lean, and lean is, lean is good to a certain extent because leaner is faster. Anytime you run a car lean, you have hotter ignition, Hotter ignitions means hotter spark, which in turn means more power. But um, lean can also drill holes in the top of your pistons if you run it too, too lean. So what could happen is, is there could be a lean or rich mixture depending on how you actually have your car set up with a vent. So on the Civic, if you put a blow off valve on your car, I mean, you can totally, I mean, there's no reason you can, and the car vents it to the atmosphere, what's gonna end up happening is you will have a lean or rich condition, which you don't want. Both of them are bad. Both of them are bad. So that's why you see people go, Duh, bro, don't put a blow off valve on your car. And then they don't give you any freaking, you know, explanation as far as why you don't want to put any blow off valve on your car. It's because it's going to run lean or rich because the car is designed to actually have uh, that that condition come back in with the additional air. Uh, now, there are certain blow off valves out there that say that they're safe for the car. One of them is the HKS Super Sequential. It's a recirculating blow off valve. It says that it recirculates the air back into the intake tube, but then it also diverts some of that air to the atmosphere. 
You see how that works? So that they're splitting the difference, okay? They're taking part of the air, they're using it for the car, and then they're using part of the air for noise. It's a noise maker. That's what a blow valve is on a stock car. It is a noise maker, okay? Um, if your car is not stock and you're building a lot of boost, there is a lot of reasons for blow valves, and that's a whole different story. But as far as, you know, 99% of you guys, your stock weight skate is gonna be just fine. All right, cool. So there's some information for you. Now, Eddie, I want more noise. Hey, that's cool, more power to you. I wanna give you more noise, and I'm gonna tell you how to do that. So remember how a recirculating blow valve works, okay? The wastegate opens and it directs air back into your intake, into your stock intake. Therefore, you should be able to hear the blow off valve make noise. However, your stock intake silences everything because the intake, you know, it's quiet. It's got silencers on it and everything like this. And it's designed that way because, you know, we don't want our cars to be too loud to annoy other people. So, if you want blow-off valve noise, save your money. Do not buy a blow-off valve. Go buy an intake. Um, if you buy like a PRL intake or a Cobra cold air intake, any type of intake, um, I was looking at the, I think it's MAF Performance or something like that. They sell a really cool intake. And the reason I like it is because it's metal, okay? And metal traditionally makes better noise than plastic. So if you want pure noise, you're gonna want probably an intake made out of metal. The problem is, is that metal intakes heat soak pretty badly, uh, but they will last a long time. Uh, I think the PRL one is made out of like silicone and plastic and things like that. And that's not a problem. It's just keep in mind that if you're going for pure noise, okay, because remember, intakes on these cars don't do a whole lot. Okay, you're talking, it's $400 and you might get one wheel horsepower. That's legit, not, you may get one, okay? And value for money, once again, you're talking to the guy who's all about value for money, that is not worth it. However, if you're buying a blow off, or if you're, if you're blow, blow off, if you're buying a intake because you want better noise, you should buy something that is metal. The reason they make instruments out of metal is because it sounds better, the tone is clearer. Therefore, if you want better sound, get the one made out of metal. Uh, that's my video for today. Uh, like, comment, uh, definitely subscribe. Uh, I don't know how many of you guys knew how blow off valve works, let alone how a uh, intake works. So definitely like and subscribe for more videos. I do have some really cool, interesting things coming along, um, like how gear ratios work and things like that. I will talk to you guys later. Have a wonderful day and thanks for tuning in.